Hiya folks, don't mind the noise, that's Ziggy Pup going crazy uh, right now. He's just had a walk and now he's running in and out of the apartment like a weirdo. But we'll just leave that as it is because it's part of our circumstances. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Now I want to apologize, I haven't been doing a lot of videos lately. And the reason is I've been really hard at work on this new book. And what I want to get back to right now is working on the book. Uh, but I do enjoy making these videos for you and, and I know people... Uh, like them, so I want to keep doing them. But uh, all I can really talk about is the book right now, so I'd like to talk about the book. Uh, one thing that's come up is I'm doing a sort of commentary on, hello Ziggy, I'm doing a sort of commentary on Yuibutsu Yobutsu, which is Buddhas Alone Together with Buddhas, which is one of the most interesting of Dogen's pieces of writing, and I've, I've really liked it a lot for a long time. And there's a paragraph which I'm pretty sure I've read on this very video channel probably not that long ago, but I'm not going to go through the old videos to try to figure out if I did that or not, but you know, maybe you just heard this like a week ago or something. But what I did is I did what I often do with this paragraph is that I like it so much I tend to quote it out of context. And working on the book, I realized that the paragraph before the one I like so much actually leads into it. So I'd like to read them both to you. So here goes. Here's the. This isn't the first paragraph of the essay. It's sort of in the middle, but it's the where I want to start for now. Okay, here goes. In ancient times, a monk asked a venerable patriarch, "When a hundred thousand myriad circumstances converge all at once, what should I do?" The venerable patriarch said, "Do not try to manage them." The meaning is, "Let what is coming come. In any event, do not stir." This is immediate Buddha Dharma. It is not about circumstances. These words should not be understood as an admonition. They should be understood as enlightenment in regard to reality. Even if we consider how to manage circumstances, they are beyond being managed. Now, I imagine this business about not managing circumstances probably sounded significantly different 800 years ago to people living in Japan than it does to us today. Because today we have a lot of technology that allows us to manage circumstances. For example, um, air conditioning, which I was using a lot of last week. Uh, maybe you're using it where you are right now. Uh, running water, flush toilets, uh, mosquito spray, uh, cars, or even bicycles like the one behind me. These are things that didn't exist in Dogen's time that allow us to, to manage our circumstances very well. So when this, uh, this monk is asking about managing circumstances that are coming at him, he's probably talking about a much wider range of things than we are talking about today. In fact, now my memory is kind of bad about this, but I think I wrote about this back in what, 2007 or whatever when I read, uh, wrote the book Sit Down and Shut Up, and I compared it to having a bad hair day, because that's what it made me think of, but it's actually much bigger than having a bad hair day. Now, he's not advocating complacency, but he's advocating a kind of merging into circumstances, which kind of is what the next paragraph leads on to, and it's the one I've been reading out of context a lot, so here's the one you might have heard last week. An ancient Buddha said, mountains, rivers, and the earth, and human beings are born together. The Buddhas of the three times and human beings have always practiced together. Thus, if we look at mountains, rivers, and earth while one human being is being born, we do not see this human being now appearing through isolated superimposition upon mountains, rivers, and earth that existed before this human being was born. Now that is really interesting, and that is very similar to the Advaita Vedanta philosophy that you'll find from guys like Sri Nisargadatta Maharaj and Ramana Maharshi and other people. In fact, somebody just sent me a PDF of a book comparing Advaita Vedanta and Zen, which I think is a real interesting thing, because they're very similar in their approach to these things, although sometimes they phrase them in language that, that seems opposite to each other. But the idea is that the circumstances you find yourself in are not at odds with you. They're not something outside of you. They are you. They are an extension of yourself. So find that, find that connection. That will help you manage circumstances by not managing them from the standpoint of like, I am the one who must manage all of this. Having said this, still the ancient words may not be devoid of further meaning. So he's going to push into this even a little more. 
How should we understand them? Just because we have not understood them, we should not disregard them. We should resolve to understand them without fail. They are words that were actually preached, and so we should listen to them. Now, Dogen likes to do this a lot. He says, even if you don't understand what the ancient masters say, try to understand them because they are important. And this could go for Dogen's words, too. This is how I dealt with Dogen. I went, well, you know, people really believe this guy and think he has something to say. I'm going to try to figure it out. Uh, trying both through intellect and through a meditation practice. Having listened to them, then we may be able to understand them. A way in which to understand them is as follows. Who is this person that has clarified by investigating this birth from the side of this human being being born just what is, from beginning to end, this thing called birth? That's a very long way of saying something that, again, the Advaita Vedanta people will say is investigate who am I, uh, investigate the actual feeling of I am to understand what is going on here. We do not know the end or the beginning, but we have been born. Neither indeed do we know the limits of mountains, rivers, and the earth. And remember, the earth means the whole universe. But we see them here and at this place as if they are walking. So we see the movement of everything around us. So that's what as if they are walking means. They are, they are practicing with us. Do not complain that mountains, rivers, and the earth are not comparable with birth. Illuminate mountains, rivers, and the earth as they have been described as utterly the same as our being born. So the circumstances that you find yourself in are you. And when you try to manage the circumstances as if you are something that stands apart from them, you're going you're gonna to lose out. But there is a way to merge with the circumstances and in a kind of ironic twist, you know, a little O. Henry twist at the end, in a way manage them by not manage them, managing them at all, which doesn't mean being complacent. I always like to put that in, but it means finding the, the way in which you are the circumstances that you find yourself in. That's what I'm working on, and that's what I'm going to continue working on right after I finish doing this video. I really appreciate your support. If you want to, send me a donation. The links are below. If you're looking at YouTube, there are actual links that you can click on, or there's this thing I put on the screen that you can uh, type in and, and do. I really, really appreciate your support. That is how I am keeping going during all this pandemic and craziness and lockdowns, but I do also understand that not everybody can can send a, a support right now so don't sweat it if you can't this is offered for free uh, i thank you very much and i really like doing this for you and we'll see you next time bye